It's OK Football's Champ Chat, a weekly show where we round up everything that's happened in the greatest league in the world. I'm Ollie K, and I'm here with my co-host. I got Beefy, I got Wedge, I got producer Matt. But before we jump into this championship show, if you're watching this on our YouTube, please like the video and subscribe for even more championship content. Unfortunately, because this is recorded on a Sunday, we can't discuss Preston North End versus Blackburn. But how do you guys think the Lancashire derby is going to go? I think it's going to be tasty, like it always is. Um, They take their football pretty seriously in Lancashire, so I'm looking forward to watching the crowd more than the game, probably. It will be an interesting one, won't it? Preston yet to really get going, right? I definitely think it's going to be another Blackburn victory as well. Yeah. Preston are going to be tired out from one of those penalties that to take midweek. Yeah, well, like 17 or something, wasn't yeah, it? 16 15, and he had one of those. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah, Blackburn obviously started great guns. John Eustace absolutely smashing it there. I put up a video on our YouTube channel talking about chaos clubs and why they're doing so well. Personally, I, I don't think Blackburn will sustain it, I think they will revert to the mean. I think out of the chaos clubs, West Brom are probably the best set this season. Like they got Carlos Corbran, they got well, a hell of a team. I remember recording this very show, Ollie, and saying that I thought West Brom were going to be my dark horse for the year, and you laughed at me. <laughs> so um, let's at the end of the season, when West Brom are in the playoffs, we'll play a clip of them winning the playoffs and getting promoted to the Premier League, and a clip of you laughing at me. I think they're going up as champions, but yeah, of course <laughs> we can we we can clip that, of course. Uh, right, so first game we're going to discuss Stoke 1, Hull City 3. And Stoke fans are angry, rightly so. They never looked like winning, even when they went ahead. And it's the first win of the season for Hull and Tim Water. Fair play, courtesy of Casey Palmer, Regan Slater, and a Wilmot own goal. And he'd already scored for Stoke as well. And. Do you think sacking Steven Schumacher oh. and, and replacing him with Norwich's goalkeeping coach was a big brain move? Well, this is the two teams that have made terrible managerial choices in the last six months playing each other. Mm. Because at what point do you realise you made a mistake as Hull in sacking your manager last year and then, yeah, sacking Schumacher and bringing in someone nobody has ever heard of to manage the team? Hasn't that worked out brilliantly? Well, Norwich goalkeepers have heard heard of him, haven't they? (laughs) Fine. Nobody in the wider football community has ever heard of. Pretty brutal, isn't it? Um, Where does Stoke go from here? It's just embarrassment after embarrassment for the Coates family. They bring back Nathan Jones, right? (laughs) (laughs) Hands off. (laughs) Yeah, we need to bring back Nathan Jones. uh, Disclaimer, we are all Luton Town fans. Uh, yeah. what, what's um, what's your feel on Stoke fans' view of the sacking? Uh, th- th- they are quite rightly angry um, from what I've been told. And also, a lot of the thing is they're not getting pointed at the Coates family because the Coates family are fantastic. They poured millions, millions and millions into that team. The, the blame lies squarely at John Walters. And the, the general feeling is why have they employed John Walters as technical director? If he wasn't a Stoke legend, he, he wouldn't even get a job at Stoke. You know, his, he would be best placed like as a technical director way further down the pyramid. Well, if he sticks with Stoke, the way things are going this year, he might be further down the pyramid. They, they genuinely could get relegated. Yeah. It's, a, it's a worry for them, but their squad's so good. I, I don't get it. I really don't no, get I, it. I, I don't get the sacking. It's a really poor decision. Right. And on to the next one. Norwich 4, Watford 1. And this was a great game. What a game. Watch as a neutral, right? What a game. And not just for us as Luton fans. I thought, wonderful. I was a bit uh, worried when Watford pulled it back to 1-1. But ultimately, defensive disaster class from Watford not taking their chances, and Norwich just, you know, vroom, went into fifth gear and off they went. Did you see that miss? Um, Jebison. Jebison. Did you see the Jebison miss? Oh, my goodness. Half a yard out, middle <laughs> of the goal, and he put it wide. Oh, man. <laughs> it it could, could not happen to a nicer football club. It really couldn't. Um, <laughs> I thought, like you say, good value for the neutral, but Norwich gave him an absolute battering. First half, there were chances both ways. Second half was an Norwich show. Wow. 
had to click. Had to click yeah, for Norwich. You know, all the talent mm. they have. Uh, even better, Jack Stacey got uh, a cheeky assist. Love that. Go on, Jack. Yeah. Yeah. There was. It looked like Watford were really vulnerable to that long ball over the top. A couple of the goals came from that, and I just think at this level. Although they were decent balls, you really need to be defending those better. And two of the goals came from just long chips over mm. the top of the defenders' heads. Poor goalkeeping for the first oh, goal as yeah, well, it was. wasn't it? <sighs> yeah, it didn't look like he got off the ground and he just pushed it into the net. It was, yeah, pretty poor. I'm not but smiling when I say these things. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm being neutral, really, really. Bad, bad day at the office for Watford. Yeah, um, and that's actually quite a bad run that they're on now. We we sort of could all see that the that the start that they had was quite unsustainable. It's the same I'm seeing for Blackburn. I, d- I just do not see it being sustainable for them. But on to the next match. Uh, so we have QPR one, Millwall one. How good is Frey? I, How what a good. signing! Yeah, where, where they did they find him from? Like the Slovenian third division or something Did where, they? Where, I don't know they found oh, him somewhere right. in Slovenia <laughs> he was just herding cattle somewhere in Slovenia <laughs> just a, a big bloke and you know uh, is Les Ferdinand still their commercial director is he still sporting director or head of recruitment I, well, I just imagine Les Ferdinand go you can you play football you have the build of a centre forward he's and definitely an upgrade on Lyndon Dykes isn't <laughs> he <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> Yeah, the, but the thing is, he's a big lad and he's powerful, but the quality of his touch is unbelievable. That goal he scored against Luton a couple of weeks ago, just on the volley, mm. yeah, um, absolutely amazing. Really, really good. Yeah, and looking at the game, uh, I feel QPR fans are definitely more relieved that they got something out of this because I thought Millwall should have taken more. They had so many clear-cut chances. They really did. Uh, look, Millwall impressed me. Like Their, their direct style of play, I, I like it. I think it's quite effective, especially when you have Jake Cooper on the end of long throws mm. and balls into the box. <coughs> it, it's very um, boring. Boring, that's the word. Yeah, I was <laughs> going to be more <laughs> diplomatic, but it's quite boring. You know what? If you're winning, it's not the end of the world. Well, though, for your it? fans, it's not boring when you win, is it? That's the reality. No, no. Um, right, and on to Sunderland 1, Middlesbrough nil, And fair play, Sunderland, I will say... Fair play, Sunderland, because this was a tough one. And I know Sunderland fans have been giving me stick in the comments um, whenever I say Sunderland got lucky. Look, I I have said it before. It's because you have such a young team. Fair play to the kids, though. And fair play, Chris Rigg, because that was a ridiculous finish. He had no right scoring from that angle. And he had no right scoring from that angle with a back heel it was a ridiculous goal fair play to them and Middlesbrough though it's kind of looking a bit wonky for Michael Carrick this was a tough game for them I don't think you can take anything from this result Sunderland looked like they'll be up there this year Um, but if you're Middlesbrough you need to be you need to be beating beating these kind of teams yeah Yeah, these are the teams that are going to be in and amongst it Mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah definitely but I think Sunderland are a better team than Middlesbrough this year yeah, but Middlesbrough suck currently, I think off the top of my head, two wins, two draws, two losses. It's not exactly, you know, look, you don't need to worry about the the form at this moment of time, but you've got to start, you know, getting wins together if you want to be yeah. going that way. Championships you know. a marathon, really is. It is. A lot of games, a lot of games. Um, right, on to Bristol City 2, Oxford 1. I can't believe this was only 2-1, to be honest. Um, so, Oxford opened the scoring. Ruben Rodriguez uh, scored. Then Sinclair Armstrong, Naki Wells with a penalty in the second half. This was a bit of a weird one. Oxford scored first, very much against the run of play. And um, Mark Harris actually missed a complete sitter and then gave the penalty away. What do you think? Yeah, it was it was tragic to watch. It was... <laughs> <laughs> it was. It was literally just a tap in. Like, can't believe he missed it. Well, was it was it worse than the Jebison miss? I don't, I don't think it was that bad. No, the, <laughs> the Jebison miss is up there for miss of the season, I yeah. think. And then yeah, so th- it was it was definitely uh, a penalty that he caused, and fair play they put it away. 
is your is your dark horse for the year fading away, producer Matt? Not at all. Not at all. No? Oxford okay. Oxford is still my dark horse. They are doing far beyond what many people thought they were capable of. Yeah. They they look like they only do it at home though. Yeah, so it's three home wins for Oxford, but three close losses away from do home. They, do they get start. overwhelmed in stadiums that have got four sides? <laughs> <laughs> Like Sorry, Oxford fans, but your ground's a joke. Oh, no, I, lo- I love the Kassam. <laughs> Great stadium. I, I love uh, stadiums like Kenilworth Road, the Kassam. Stadiums that Kenilworth Road is good, but it's uh, got four sides. I, it, it now, it didn't, many, it didn't yeah, used to, say. to be fair. Yeah. <laughs> There's three sides and a bunch of glass before <laughs> yeah. two seasons ago. Yeah, yeah. Look, they're, these are the, the last bastions of you proper know, football. Of football when it was football. None of these out of town in the middle of nowhere stadia. Proper football, proper fo- jumpers for goalposts. Jumpers for goalposts. <laughs> <laughs> right on to Burnley two, Portsmouth one, and uh, this is the late, late, late show. Callum Lang got the ball rolling for Pompey. Burnley hit back with Sarmiento and Brownhill right at the death. And Pompey had had two chances, like two massive chances, and uh, I feel. They could have got something out of this, but that that Brownhill goal just well, rolled in. How do you win the championship? You grind still it out. you grind it out. You're still games at the end, and Absolutely. that's what the top teams are going to do all year. And I think Burnley are going to be nailed on for one of those auto promotion spots with Leeds. Even even with Parker, yeah. Even losing Oderbear and Berger. Well, th- so there was a rumor that there was some. Um, behind the scenes discord between the owners and Parker but it, it hasn't translated into anything and he looks very solid in his job now so uh, yeah I think they're going to be up there I think there are about eight teams that have to go into those well top six positions so I guess we'll see what happens right yeah uh, so Pompey fans they they can feel hard done by um, the general feeling is it was poor subs that caused them that game with um People saying Matt Ritchie and Andre Dizel being, you know, the reason they actually lost that game, um, which I feel is a bit harsh to pin it on two people, um, but it is what it is, right? Yeah, well, you, you get your lead, you got to hold it, and they didn't. Yeah, not not all substitutes work out, and yeah, like against Burnley, you know, speaking as a Luton fan, it can always be so much worse against Burnley, <laughs> can't it? It could. It could be worse. <laughs> I, for one, agree. Um, right, moving on to Cardiff nil leads two. And this was just a mad game. It was sadly the first game back at Cardiff since Sol Bamba sadly passed away. They had a lovely yeah, banner for him. Did. They had a round of applause in the 14th minute. Shockingly, though, the Leeds bench got up and applauded, showed their respects. The Cardiff bench didn't. Absolutely disgraceful stuff. Very strange. Did they not know what was happening, maybe? This is the only thing I can think of. Yeah, but there's a proper disconnect. There, there's right. such a disconnect all the way from the top with Vincent Tan all the way down through the club right now. What are Cardiff fans saying about it? Well, it the, the performance was described as the worst performance they've ever seen, which is understandable. Um, so it'd be good to hear from Cardiff fans in the comments what they think is going on at the club if it is as bad as you say it is yeah well I think Errol Bullet is is he's about to get the bullet to be honest right. um, I think his time is is done it's an absolutely shocking start to the season considering he actually looked decent last season he was probably second to Danny Roll in terms of new manager actually making an impact um, but in all fairness Leeds should have scored way more Cardiff had a I think Ulrich right. did really well for Has he taken over from Horvath then? I believe he oh, was in this game. Yeah. Poor Ethan Horvath. Mm. Yeah, he had a really good game in this one. There was a lot of shots getting fired at him, and he did really well. I th- the red card cost him as well, didn't it? And you can complain all you want, but that's a nailed on red card. Yeah, yeah so fair play to the striker trying to get up. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, it would have been easy to lay on the, the floor. He at least tried yeah. to go on. R- referee handled it well, waited to see if an advantage accrued. It didn't. Took it back, and last man, you've got to give the red. I was told by a Leeds fan um, because it's not all sunshine and roses. There were boos uh, from the Leeds fans. Really, uh, they're they're not happy with how Daniel Farker's playing, and it was described to me as 
Southgate watching Southgate's football, but all the players are on Valium. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's, a, it's an epidemic. It's a pet epidemic. <laughs> Everyone's trying to play like Everyone's pet the ball, over. Yeah. <laughs> oh God. Well, sorry for Leeds fans then. Yeah. Well. Oh well. You know, it's not <laughs> so bad. They, they got lots of very good players. I think so. so. On every podcast so far this year, I've said that Leeds will bottle it later, um, and I'm sticking by that. Yeah. I, I I don't think Daniel Farker will see the season out. I reckon fan pressure and like there's a lot of Leeds fans. I reckon fan pressure is going to get to it, and you know they're a they're vocal fan base as well. Aren't they're they? so vocal, yeah. and there are so many of them. They are an absolutely gigantic club. Yeah. Um, so we'll, we'll see if Daniel Farker, like even with results going his way, two 0 against Cardiff. Like in all fairness, Cardiff were abject. A hundred and seven yeah. passes completed in a hundred two minutes of football. It's going to be a really uh, long this game was all year to be a Cardiff fan. It's, it? Yeah, well, yeah, they could then. go down. Oh, they are going down. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really concerning. Yeah, really concerning. So on to Coventry one, Swansea two. What's happening at Coventry? <laughs> I, I think you've cursed them. That's what's happening. You, uh, like you I call them my dark horse. You, they I were your dark Hadji horse. Hadji Wright is the player of the now. Hadji Wright doesn't start any games, and they lose every game. <laughs> what is happening? It's so bad. Uh, what a poor start to the season. I still think Mark Robbins is like a sensational yeah, manager. Look, Swansea absolutely battered Coventry for the first half an hour. But then was it a fact that maybe Coventry set up really badly for the first half an hour? And then Swansea just sat back and were, were like, yeah, well, come on then. Try try and break us down. I think, you know, momentum is a really weird thing in football. And if you don't, you know, Luton are a great example of a team that were just in the habit of losing. And I think Coventry are going to have to break this habit really quickly. But fair, fair play, Swansea. Like, look, they they took their chances. They defended well. Vigoro, uh, who they they've signed from Burnley, sitting on the bench at Burnley, doing nothing after being incredible for Leicester Orient. Fair play to him. He's finally playing football again. Yep. Uh, I like that. Yeah, kept I him in it. Really. Yeah, seven saves. Uh, I hate to see third choice goalkeepers because. <laughs> You know, at Burnley, he was just another goalkeeper. I want to see goalkeepers actually playing. None of this Stuart, Stuart Taylor, Scott Carson nonsense. Yep. Yeah, I can't stand for that. Right, on to Luton 2, Sheffield Wednesday 1. A very dominant performance for the Hatters. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it's a mugging. It's an absolute mugging. Um, Luton were terrible. Terrible for 75, 80 minutes of that game. Wrong system, players just not connecting. I mean, Chong, who I picked earlier on in the year as someone who was going to set the championship on fire, was just anonymous for the entire mm. game. Um, fair play to Sheffield Wednesday. That fella Bannon with that goal. Oh, my goodness. What a Barry quality. Bannon, never heard of him. What a quality goal that was. Standard Barry Bannon, that is, though. I mean, getting it on the volley. He's done that before. He'll continue doing it. And yeah. I think Sheffield Wednesday might feel hard done by they didn't come away with a point. I don't think they did enough to win it. No, but I mean the debatable point in there on their penal on our on the Luton penalty. Um, you know, did it hit his shoulder? Did it hit his arm? You can't have arm. two goalkeepers. No, you on can't. The pitch you're not once. allowed two goalkeepers. That's true. He, he moved towards the ball, sort of stuck his shoulder out a bit. I think on balance, maybe a penalty, but you could argue it both ways. And I, I saw online a lot of Sheffield Wednesday fans feeling hard done by. Yeah, they're aggrieved. Why wouldn't they be aggrieved, right? Well, the, the second Luton goal was a definite handball um, in the build-up to it, mm. so it, should, it was a definite handball. Yeah, ball to hand. There's no such thing as ball to hand when you're the goal scorer. Oh, 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 okay. Goodness Sorry. me. Yeah. I need to brush up on my FA bylaws, don't I? Uh, no, you need to get the iFab app on your phone. What's iFab? The guys who set the rules for football. Boo, I don't, I don't <laughs> play by the rules. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, tough, tough watch that game. Really tough watch. It was not an enjoyable game. I did enjoy our subs though with Victor Moses and Tom Krause. They looked very good. Yeah, Victor yeah. Moses is is back back in England and his quality. He hasn't lost a yard of pace, has no, he? Definitely Tom not. Krause as well. His debut in English football. What a player! Such a long neck as well. Have you, any of you guys noticed that? He's got no, such I didn't. a long neck. No. Yeah. You know, I'll look out for that next go, week. Go yeah. out for a neck tattoo, you get charged for a sleeve. <laughs> Unreal. 
Right, on to Sheffield United 1, Derby 0. Very dominant performance from Sheffield United. But same as always, relying on a bit of Hamer magic to bail them out. I think, are you going to begin this section <laughs> oh, with, an apology. Uh, with an apology to uh, Sheffield okay. United fans? Sheffield United fans, I apologise. With all the riches that you have in your squad, your Callum O'Hares, your, your Gustavo Hamers, genuinely, you should be doing better. The only thing holding you back right now is Chris Wilder. Look, I know you like Chris Wilder, but he's, you know, with your squad, with your playing stuff, you should be doing so much better. You shouldn't be relying on Gustavo Hamer to bail you out with a free kick. Should we, should we read one of the top comments from Sheffield United fans last week? We had a, quite a few, um, <laughs> mainly critical of you, Ollie. Uh, and I'll read this one from Daryl Hill. My number one fan. 2812, your number one fan. Who are these idiots? Do any of you even have a clue what you're talking about? The Blades let them have possession as 90% <laughs> of it was across their own back line. Blades never got out of second grade. Not sure what that means. They knew they didn't need to. I think he means gear. If we had to be more clinical, it could have been four or five, while Hull had one effort off the bar late on. So if they wanted to be more clinical this time, do you think Sheffield United should have perhaps won by more than one goal being a free kick this week, guys? Um, no, they were they were super in, in charge of the game, and I, I think yeah. it was a, qu- a quality win for them. And, Good win. Um, I just love the fact that you look stupid now. It makes me really happy. <laughs> <laughs> No, all I'm saying is, like, come on, if you're in charge of a game, put the game to bed. You know, they have a manager who's been in charge of them for over a year now. They have a, a way of playing it. They, they play quite direct football. Like, why not just put games to bed? Score there's more than one goal. There's no fun in winning exactly. by more than one goal. Yeah, well, fair play Derby for holding firm <laughs> in that case. You know, fair yeah. play. Um but yeah, Sheffield United did absolutely batter them. Like fair play, Sheffield United fans. Yes, absolutely battered them. Derby defended well. Eight blocks, twenty clearances. I don't know how it was only one nil, honestly. Uh, and on to our final game: West Brom one, Wayne Rooney's Plymouth Argyle zero. Fair Is that play. what we're going to call them all the time? <laughs> oh yeah, well that's what Sky calls them. It's good enough for them. It's good enough for me. Fair play, Plymouth. They gave as good as they got. Josh Madger. Josh Madger. Like, where has Josh Madger come from? I, yeah. I, like, I'm aware of him because of, you know, that season in League One with Sunderland. And he went off to France. He didn't really set the world alight. And then he came back on loan to Fulham in the Premier League. He was a bit rubbish, wasn't he? But now he's, he's on form. Found it's his level. Small. Yeah, he's found, found his, his level. level. That's what it is, yeah. Um, and let's a great but then again, I'd also like someone who can score as many goals as him at sure. the moment. So, well, it's the chances that are being created. This one in particular was just a ball straight across, tap in, centre goal. He didn't mm. miss it like Jebson. <coughs> Let, let's <laughs> let's go back back a few weeks in history to us talking about the championship and who we thought would be up there. And I, I'm going to keep going on about this every week now to the end of the year. I said West Brom are going to be up there, and you laughed at me. Yeah, well, you, also, you laughed. You I laughed long. Laughed, uh, I also laughed at Mark Ryman as well. And also, when you said it, there is no evidence because that podcast that was the pod that never happened. Yeah, okay. that pod it doesn't, doesn't exist. But my let, friend. let's go back to me saying West Brom were going to be up there. You laughing at me, and West Brom currently being top of the league. Yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. five wins, one draw. West Brom are a team that should always be up there, yeah. thereabouts. So it's always I don't if they don't get the playoffs, it's a failure of a season for them but they do look good at the moment the new owner Shailan Patel has yeah. done so well because he inherited an uh, what a mess yeah. dumpster fire and he's he's uh, put them on a he's put them on a budget yeah you know, well it, and yeah. it's what they needed because the money was just flying out the door and nobody knew where yeah and they, they done almost well like he knows well. how to run a football club it does right, seem that yeah. way doesn't <laughs> yeah. it yeah yeah like you know you get a business guy in they actually know what they're doing fair play and uh, and they have the best manager in the league, without doubt. Carlos Scorbran, absolute genius. I'd, mm-hmm. I'd kill to have him at my club. Absolute kill. He's brilliant. What a manager. And he works well on a budget as well. Yeah, well, and he's going to need to. Yeah, 
But he, you know, but a Huddersfield, he couldn't wait to get out, could he? No. Two weeks into the season, he was gone. Well, it, and it's good to see clubs that were in financial difficulty or being poorly run actually getting back on a, a level playing field. It's really good for West Brom fans. Yeah, it's good for West Brom. Uh, it's great for the Hawthorns as well. The Hawthorns, what a stadium that mm-hmm. is at this level. It's fantastic. Um, right. We should probably wrap this up, shouldn't we, lads? Well, should we just look at my favourite top comment of the week? Oh, yeah, okay. From, from <laughs> last week. And now it's time for Beefy's top comment of the week. Um, so I've obviously read my favourite, which was Daryl Hill calling you a twat. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, top comment of the week goes to Michael Holt7963, who said, Beefy, regarding the cowbell man, after 20 pints, of course you'd be pissing on stadiums. But he follows it up with this little um, winner. Mind you, being a Burnley fan, I would piss on Ewood. No problems. <laughs> so that, that is the proper football derby. Like Bur- Burnley, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Blackburn. Yeah, yeah. Yes, it? Preston versus Blackburn today. But I think the main one is Burnley versus yep. Blackburn. Yeah, it's great. Like, I was talking to Joe from uh, Turfcast. And like, I, I don't think I can say it on YouTube what, what he <laughs> called them. <laughs> it's brilliant, though. Like, if you're a Burnley fan, you know what you call Blackburn fans. It's, it's tremendous stuff right well who's impressed you the most this week if you want to please get your thoughts and opinions in the comments also a reminder like this video it only takes a second and subscribe for even more championship content a big shout out to our audio partners blackstar application and carry on for giving us all the tools needed to make this podcast and also a thank you to the record shop in amersham wherever you are in the uk Head on down to Amersham if you collect vinyl. They got tons of it. And you'll get a discount if you mention the OK Football Show when you go in there. Right. Here's to a week of championship football. Let's see what happens. Everyone, have a great week. <laughs>